UI view controller is the very is the most basic view controller that we can get. Um, all it really does is provide a bunch of uh, methods for us that are called at various points in the lifetime of the app, but also gives us a single property called view, which refers to the white box that we were looking at before. So if I go back to Interface Builder, this guy, view, is act can be accessed by dot view on the instance of the view controller. Okay? But you'll notice that this is a class definition. And nowhere in here is view controller ever explicitly instantiated, at least in this file. All this file does is declaring that there is this class called view controller. And Xcode picks up on that, so it's able to put it over here in the in the inspector window for us. So it's kind of magical. Xcode is always inspecting the code that you're writing and making various properties, various classes, various variables available in the context. So this is why it's called an integrated development environment. Because it's looking at your code, it knows what your code means, and it can give you some help as you're writing. Okay. Does that make sense? This is, this is where all of the logic that when you're looking at the view controller scene will live. All of that stuff is going to live here. So we're going to be making variables, we're going to be adding properties, we're going to be like just adding a whole bunch of stuff to this class to enliven it with behavior. Nice choice to announce that first. Like Which class, class? The class stuff. Yeah, because this actually yeah. makes a lot more sense. Does it make does it make sense? Like you know what override means, you know what func means, like super dot, yeah, whatever super dot. Like don't worry about super dot yet. Um, you've seen it before. But um, we're extending this class. This class has another huge definition somewhere else. I can actually find it if you're curious. So you can change the name, right? View controller can be any name you want. It can be any name you want. This is the code that Apple has behind the scenes. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we're never going to read this. That was just a scary first. But does this look does this look somewhat familiar? Like, there isn't really much here that you have. Sorry. <coughs> that, that would be the code within the code. Code within the code. Yeah, pretty much. Because the files are in the computer. <laughs> <laughs> would, would you ever need to use that to find the methods that you want to call? Yeah, um, yeah there's there's additional documentation stuff that lives behind there, but yeah. but all that's been like auto-generated into web pages anyways, so there's no real reason to look at it. Okay. But um Unless you happen to stumble on a bug that Apple you know. It happens. It happens. All right. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump back into Interface Builder. But what I'm going to do is show you um, another feature of Xcode that's going to let dealing with code, this bridge between code and interfaces, a lot easier. It's called the Consistent Editor. In order to get enough real estate on my screen, I'm going to close off that sidebar over there. And I'm going to close off this sidebar over here. And then go into the assistant editor. Oh, crap. I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to go into the storyboard, select this guy, and then go into the assistant editor. So on the left, I have my view, con I have view controller here. On the right, I have the view controller class. So these are the same thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding UI elements that you're familiar with. One is going to be a label, and another is going to be a button. And I'm going to have the behavior that I want is tapping the button is going to change the label. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, just find the UI label over here and drop it in. And then I'm going to make it bigger just because. And then I'm going to find the button and drop it in here. And change the text a little bit and drop it. And that's it. 
be so hard. Remember this, this universe? Dragging and dropping stuff into the view. Great. So now what I'm going to do is go back into the assistant editor. I'm actually going to close this. So all that I see are these two views. Alright. So what interface, so there are two ways that we're going to bridge the gap between code and interfaces. And one is called an output. An output is a property that references something over on the left in a view that where I've dropped something in an interface for. Um, there are a bunch of different, there are a couple of different ways to create them, but the one that is most palpable and is most fun for us right at this moment is this. So I want to be able to reference this guy. So what I'm going to do is <coughs> right click on it, or control click. You see it says new referencing output here. I'm going to grab on that and drag it over onto the code. And drop it. It's going to ask me some questions. Remember, properties are just variables inside the class, but in order to make a variable, I need a name. So I'm just going to call this my label. Because it's mine. And then hit connect. Yeah. So um, you'll notice a bunch of other keywords here. But what I want you to focus on is just this part right here. Var my label UI label. It's a property with the name my label, which means I can do self dot my label. And it's of type UI label, which is a view, a subclass of the view class that represents this guy right here, that draws this guy. Yes? There's, there was another layer of code that we're not even going to touch that shows really yeah. is. Their code corresponding to anything in the controller in that, just by virtue of dragging onto there? Um, at this point, the, the only thing that actually has actual Swift code behind it is probably the definition of UI label. All this other stuff is probably another layer under that. Right, so I didn't have to explicitly say I want to I wanna pull this into the code in this level. But like that is, there's obviously code for that button that exists. Oh, like, oh, oh, yeah. So, um, this storyboard file is actually like a, a piece of markup language code. It's all, it's all XML, I think. Um, is it XML? Yeah. So what that does is give instructions um, to the app to to instantiate these um, these as objects, like these objects, and draw them in a particular place. And you would see code that would say it's X size and it has Y text in it. Yeah, it's very different from what you've actually from what you've been writing so far. But yes, that's absolutely right. Is that is that even um, generated in a way that we can manipulate directly? I think so. I, I would never recommend it. Uh, originally, it was the, it was created in a way that you can't even read it really at all. All right. I thought it was I thought it was human readable. Maybe I'm thinking of nib files. Well, it's human readable. Yeah, it's all like somehow. Yeah. So it looks like this. So there's so there's my label, right? There's one reference, one reference to it. So that's actually setting that setting that. Uh, this is actually representing that connection, the, the connection between that label. Nobody's so ever gonna mess with this. Never ever gonna mess with this, mess with this ever. Keep in mind, you will never touch that. You don't know look at it. You won't smell it. Nothing. That's right. <laughs> This is like opening the transmission in your car. It's like, what the, why would you ever do that ever? Unless you're a mechanic. This stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, unless you're a mechanic. True. I mean, you could, the same thing could have been achieved by us just declaring the variable there, my little one. Um, so yes and, the yes and no. So that label is my little one. Yeah, right. well, you could have written this and then connected it that way. And I'm going to show you how to do that later. There's a third way to do it, which is not dealing with this at all. And creating it programmatically. Yeah. So I can instantiate a UI label, set its label, set its position, set its size, just like any other property, and then attach it to the dot, to the self dot view property of this guy by using a, a method called add view. Just so keep in mind that when you do that, you won't see the label in the interface. You won't see it over there. Yeah. But anyway, but let's stick to yeah, let's stick to the, the simple stuff. To, to, to get this uh, to get this logic going, um, don't worry about weak. Don't worry about the 
an exclamation mark yet. Just look at this identifier here, at IB output. So this is telling you that uh, IB stands for interface builder. An outlet means that it's a reference to something, to an object over there. So this is going to contain an uh, instance of the class UI label. Okay. My desired behavior is such that when I tap on the button, I change the text in the label. So I'm going to reference this guy in a very similar way, but instead of creating an outlet, I'm going to create an ID action. And the action that I want comes from the sent events column here. And touch up inside is generally the one that we use most often. Because when you tap on a button, if you, if you remember, when you tap on a button, it doesn't do anything until you lift your finger off the button, right? Most of the time. So um, I'm going to take that, drag it over here, where it says insert action in a little blue line, then let go. And it's going to ask me, what do I want to call this? I'm going to call it my button tapped. Um, I'm going to set this type to UI button, and then say connect.
you show it how you could, again, how you, when you press the button, like on, on that side? On, in the code? Yeah. Yes. So all the magic happens right here. So you'll notice, you'll notice this little dot with a, that's been filled right here. So this is pretty similar to the dots that get filled over here. See this event touch up inside? Yeah. This is has a reference to view controller, my button tapped, which is this action right here. And I created that action by dragging from by by dragging from that event into the code like this. So I can also I can also go the other way. text field to this property that I've already written. So all I'm going to do is mouse over this and drag over here. You notice how the, the little circle got filled in? So that actually means that it knows what you're talking about. So this has, it, it will initialize this property at runtime, like when you, when you actually run the app. So you don't have to worry about an init method, initializing this at all, like it, it happens framework, the infrastructure does it for you. Okay, so now instead of setting my text to, to Shiva's rule, I'm going to say self dot my text field dot, I think it's just text. So for those of you that don't have this turned on, I'm going to escape and dot escape. But so whenever you need that menu to pop up, say escape. So text, the text displayed by the text field. It's a string. Excellent. So it's like text. And just hit play. All right. So
stuff that I didn't tell you to ignore. So there's a way to not drag and drop, like just all code. You know? There's a way to do there's all. There's a way to do all code. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just asking. Oh, okay. I don't you don't want. To, you don't want. To, okay. Do you, do you want to do that? Because uh, you like you like doing it all in code. Some people like doing it all in code. Absolutely one go. <laughs> Much more flexibility. Yeah. I'm starting I'm getting more used to the UI UI builder or uh, interface builder as time goes on. So um, okay. What else can I show you before I have you do it as well? Um, any special any special requests? So... 